Welcome. Um, so what I previously uh, worked with is you know, using Pythagorean triples. And I listed you know, the main triples, where always the last number is always your hypotenuse, because it's always the largest. And for this problem, we have fractions. And you could go ahead and apply the Pythagorean theorem. It'd be no problem. But the Pythagorean triples help us, because they have already proven to um, be equal with the, or to prove that the Pythagorean theorem for these right triangles, with these being the legs and the hypotenuse. Now, I look at these angles and I say, if I want to use Pythagorean triple, I'm not seeing any of these as, you know, any of these as fractions. Um, but one thing I did mention is that here's kind of like your main Pythagorean triples. But what also is nice about these is you can multiply them by a multiplier, and that will still produce a Pythagorean triple, still produce sides that will make a, uh, will make a right triangle. So if I multiply by 2, I'd have 6, 8, 10. Guess what? That's another Pythagorean triple. If I multiply by 3, I would have 9, 12, 15. Guess what? That's another Pythagorean triple. Um, so when I look at this problem, I see, all right, well, by multiplying, I'm not getting any of these numbers. But guess what? We can also divide by, by multipliers. So therefore, this would be 3 halves, 4 halves, and 5 halves. So therefore, I can simply say, well, if that's 5 halves, that's the hypotenuse, that's one leg, then my other leg has to be 3 halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use Pythagorean triples to determine your missing leg of a triangle. Thanks.